I'm Daniel from Corelust, and today we're doing some maintenance on our aquariums. We are changing the carbon and the GFO, and one of the things I wanted to show you guys is this awesome BRS reactor for the GFO and carbon. It is great because you can mount it somewhere, and you just have to unscrew these canisters, and then take out these inserts to replace them, refill them, rinse them, whatever you want to do. I have these set up already made to make it really simple for me. Because a lot of times you want to do your maintenance and you want to keep your tank healthy, but you get stuck in a time jam and you're like, dude, I can't rip apart my sump, I can't do water change today, I don't have time for this, I don't have time for that. Well, you know, your corals don't understand what you're busy and what your schedule's like, so they just want clean water. So I have been deciding on, instead of trying to use my media and run it to the last minute, I want to upgrade these and just replace them every two weeks. Instead of doing them at the end of the month, I want to see what happens when we start replacing these every two weeks. Carbon does not last long in your system. Carbon really is, I mean, one and done. Once you use it up, it's no good. Same thing with the GFO. At least the granulophilic oxide bonds with your phosphate, so at least it's lashing onto it. It's not going to leach back into your tank. So that's something that's really good. Um, some of you who have used these canisters, these reactors for media, um, they're great for their time, they work really well, but anyone who's had to unscrew these things understands how hard and how much of a pain these really are to use. Plus, you have to disconnect the hoses, it's more room for it to leak. Um, so yeah, so if you have these, I'm proud of you for using them for filtration. But if you can upgrade sometime, it's definitely worth having one of these reactors just with a screw on canister. So, plus these are already ready. If you buy some extra on hand, you can wash these, replace them whenever you want, have a couple ready. That way if you run out of media, you have time to order it because you know you got two backups and you know they're good for a couple weeks. You know, whatever your system requirements are. Um, but yeah, so today is filtration uh, maintenance and I'm gonna go through our system but this is one of the things I just wanted to highlight just kind of show everybody this has really made my life a lot easier just because we can have these ready and I can swap them out whenever I want so even if the water is looking cloudy if something just died if I found something that released toxins into my tank maybe a water change I wasn't happy with I can quickly just come in here grab a carbon and swap it out so yeah there's that. I have so many lights on here, it's really hard to see the tank. I know, I keep promising you guys better aquarium pictures, but um, like I said, I'm working on it right after Mac, and then we'll have some more time. But it's going to be a busy week coming up, I got a lot to do. Um, so, you know, maintenance comes first, got to keep the corals healthy. That's why I want to check on the system. My skimmer is completely dirty. I'm going to have to clean out the refugium, check out the macroalgae, see how things have been growing. But yeah, these skimmer cups definitely need to be cleaned up. So when we do our water changes, we will clean them out. And here's some more hose. I just got some longer hose because I'm always stretching. Um, that stuff's expensive. Couldn't believe how much that is a foot. So when you get 20 feet, it adds up really quick. All right. yeah. Another dirty skimmer. I don't know if that's a good thing, but I guess we're feeding well and out some of the food, so it's doing its job. But I noticed that I didn't have that skimmer that dark until I started heavy feeding again. But. And look at these anemones. Man, they look happy. These things are monsters. Ooh. There's the Chevron Tang. He's just been sitting in here. He's, a, he's in a holding tank. I haven't decided um, if he's ready for the big time yet. But Anyway, this is where the bobbit worm is residing. I promise I'll get more updated footage soon. But these are where the tank assholes end up. If they are pests, if they're eating coral, biting someone, being a jerk, they usually end up here. So, yeah. 
So I'm gonna flush these lines, put some uh, clean RODI water in there, just to make sure my alk, calcium, magnesium are clean, because sometimes when I don't run them for a while, um, if my levels are high, I'll turn back my dosing or turn it off for a day or two and they can kind of dry up. So, so yep, so there's that. I'm gonna check on all the pumps, make sure everything's working correctly. Auto top off is good. We got salt mixing in the bucket right now. Can't wait to do some water changes, but there you guys go. Maintenance is important, make sure you do it. Try to make it as easy as possible for yourself. Label things, write things down. Um, the easier the hobby is, the more organized you are, the less stressful this is, and the happier you will be. So, and the easier it is to diagnose if there's an actual problem, because you'll know you just checked everything. So, we're always learning, we're always improving. So, thanks for watching, and as always, happy reefing.